All right, welcome back, Chemistry 111 guys. We've got another virtual lab activity here, and this is a really fun one. Kind of shake things up a little bit. Dr. Taylor came up with a really cool activity, and it's based on uh, this, uh, I think, a pretty fun website developed by uh, Professor Bertrand over at uh, Missouri University of Science and Technology. And I really, I really hope you have a good time with this one. It's sort of a mystery if you think about it. Um, so what you're going to do, you come to this website, and, and Dr. Taylor gives you the link, and, and you're going to come here, and you're going to check it out. And she wrote some really good instructions, but you know, um, sometimes I think it's. I'm a visual person, so it's kind of fun to see someone uh, work something out in front of you before you jump into it. And really what you've got here is you've got a, if you look at this, this is a well plate. Essentially it's like, think of a bunch of really short test tubes smooshed together. Each of these you're kind of looking from the top down. These little areas where you can put drops of different chemicals and you can see how they react. Um, and you can put them, the nice thing is they're really well organized, so you can make a little matrix here, a little grid, and you can label things with columns and rows and, and kind of keep them organized. And so up at the top, you've got little dropper pipettes, right? These little dropper pipettes, you're going to click on them, and they correspond to these different chemicals. You're going to put them in these little cells and add different things and mix, mix them and match them all up and see what kind of reactions you get. Do you get precipitates? Do you get gas bubbles? Or, or does nothing happen, right? That's really important. And then you got a little Q-tip here to clean things out, a little pencil to measure some or to write some observations and a little click button, a quick button here to click and clean. Um, and so when you first hit this, right, I think Dr. Taylor tells you you're going to look at the knowns, right? So you've got some uh, nitric acid, some potassium carbonate, some lead uh, two nitrate, some barium nitrate, and some potassium iodide, right? And, and here you can kind of begin to make a matrix, right? And so if you think about this, if you were to put a drop of nitric acid and a drop of nitric acid, well, that's the same thing. So there's nothing going to happen there. So we really want to focus on mixing different things. And the order in which you mix them doesn't really matter. However, you, will, you do want to keep them organized. And Dr. Taylor gave you some really good tables on how to do that. So let's dive right in. First thing you want to do before you do anything else, I promise you, and, and this kind of caught me the first time I did this, is you want to use... Um, these black arrows here and you want to kind of slide a black background behind the well plate and what that lets you do is if you form a white precipitate um, it lets you see that color against a black background right because if you leave it with the white background you're not going to see those white precipitates and you're going to get confused real quick so make sure you've, you've covered that up first thing you do before anything else and then what you got to do right you're going to come over here and you're going to say okay well I'm going to pick one of these droppers it doesn't matter which one you pick. We're just kind of playing around right now as a demo. You can be more thoughtful when you actually get into the activity. I'm just trying to show you what's going on here. We'll grab, I don't know, how about some uh, potassium carbonate. So you're going to click one time on the little pipette. And if you look, wherever you come down here, you can put that pipette in any of these little cells, right? And so I'm going to click over here. I don't know. Let's see. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to line it up, right? So I'm going to line it up and put it right here next to the, the column, right? So I got potassium carbonate, I'm gonna click here. And then you have to do this, really important. You, you first position your pipette with one click, and then you're gonna click one more time, and you're gonna put a drop. Check that out, each click will put a different drop. And I, found, I thought it was actually kind of funny. If you keep doing this, look, I don't know if you can see that, but you get the little uh, warning sign that says, hey, idiot, you overfilled it, and now you made a big old mess. I thought that was kind of cool. So I'm going to clean up my mess. So there you go, clean that up. And then this time, I'm just going to put one drop. You, you know, you can use one or two drops. It doesn't matter. So here we go. I'm going to put my uh, potassium carbonate right there. I put two drops. You, you don't have to put two. You can put one, but there you go. And then, since I have potassium carbonate here, I'm going to grab some nitric acid grab this one you see here and I'm gonna make sure I put it in the same cell and look what happens I'm click and drop one in oh check that out I got some bubbles that's pretty cool so anyway there you go that's how you can kinda of see observations right and if you want to you can come over here and you can click on record your observations and you get a table and that table is matched up with the reagents the chemicals that you have on both the columns and the rows so here we can kinda of, uh, we can grab the pencil right and you know you can sit there and on the on the first page I think a G is for a gas and I had it right here right so if I put G well actually let me click on it first so I'm click on this cell and then I'm gonna grab my little pencil and I'm gonna say okay I had G for a gas and then look right here it matches up so my second uh, row first uh, sorry first row second column and I got a little G for gas or whatever you want to put and you're gonna do this kind of on your own I think it's pretty cool uh, let's do one more and I'll, I'll let you go 
Um, so I always like, I'm, I'm kind of paranoid, I always click clean to reset everything um, when I'm doing one just to show you. Um, so here, let's, let's take something I don't know. Let's take the lead 2 nitrate and we'll put it here because I'm going to mix it with the potassium iodide. So I'm going to put a drop or two in there. Now I'm going to click on my potassium iodide. And I want to make sure I go into the same cell. See, I'm lining up potassium iodide with lead nitrate, right? They intersect right here. Click, and I'm going to add. Check that out. I got a precipitate. Not only did I get a precipitate, check it out. It's yellow, so that gives us some really neat information. So then I could go over here to my observations, click the pencil, and put my information there. Although you're going to do it on paper, so don't worry too much about that. Okay. So you're going to work through Dr. Taylor's activity here. And then at the very end, once you kind of feel comfortable, you're going to be challenged. And we're going to do some critical thinking Wabash style, right? So then you're going to, when you're all ready, you're going to probably reset. And then when you're ready to go, you're going to click Knowns, Unknowns, and this is going to reset. And what it's going to do is going to give you a totally new one where these chemicals, it's the same five chemicals, right? The same five chemicals, but you don't know which is which. So you're going to have to sit here, remember to use your black background. And you're going to use a matrix. You're going to mix these things and be really careful about your observations and compare them to what you observed for when you had known chemicals, right? When you knew what you were mixing. And you're going to use these observations, right? These qualitative observations, gas formation, precipitation reactions, what color precipitate. And then sometimes you're not going to have any reaction at all. And so you're going to be challenged to really think about using those observations. You're probably going to write some chemical equations too and, and use that information for the knowns to compare to what you get for the observations for the unknowns. And then you're going to solve this. And once you're all done, you can check your results and you get a, um, you know, you get to find out what you got. Now, granted, I didn't, I didn't put any in, in here. In fact, I'll just go make some up. You know, you could sit there and just, you know, I'll make a really stupid thing here. And then boom, oh, that's not bad. I got three just by guessing, right? But anyway, you get the idea here. You're going to really try to solve this and, and, and use what you know from our solubility rules, from the types of chemical reactions that we've been talking about. And hopefully this is a little bit of fun. It's a nice challenge. And, uh, you know, we, we, Dr. Taylor and I and Dr. Schmidt, we work really hard to give you guys a really neat um, alternate activity. We hope this one kind of changes things up. So congrats to... Uh, Dr. Taylor, I think, for coming up with a good one. So hope you enjoyed. Hope this has helped, and I'll catch you later.